Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to get started with chapter 21. Um, <laughs> I was just trying to get Miha to read with us, but she's not the biggest fan of the reading tent yet. We'll get her there. All right, let's go ahead and get started with chapter 21. Going to the bathroom at school just plain sucks. I have to be taken out of my chair, lifted onto the toilet, and held there so I don't fall. Then someone has to wipe me when I'm finished. It's not so bad when it's mom, but it's awful when a classroom aide has to do that for me. She's required by law to wear gloves, I guess in case I have some kind of infection or disease. It's completely embarrassing. I don't usually have to go first thing in the morning, but I'm too... I'm so nervous on Tuesday, I ask to be taken twice. Then I go to all my inclusion classes. The students who tried out for the quiz team can't stop chatting about the test. I listen to every word. I couldn't believe how easy it was, Connor boasts. I bet I got a higher score than you, Claire says, her voice cocky. I thought the geography questions were off the map, Rose adds. I never even heard of some of those countries. Jessica shakes her head. The math part wasn't fun either. I can't believe we even care about a dumb test for a quiz team, Rodney comments, because the competition is on television, man. Connor replies, big time TV coverage here in town, and if we make the finals, we go to D.C., where it will be televised all over the country. If we win, we get, on t we get to be on Good Morning America. My grandma in Philly can watch me, and my auntie in Frisco. I'll be famous. What do you mean, if we win, Connor? Claire asks. Don't you mean when we stomp the competition? Claire doesn't mind it. She reminds him, hey, the team would be nothing without me. He holds his hand up in the air for high fives. I listen quietly from the back of the room. When the bell rings it indica to indicate that it's time for Mr. Dimming's class, my palms feel sweaty. Catherine pushes me into the room and whispers in my ear, Relax, you rock. Mr. Dimmings gets the class quiet and takes attendance. Why do teachers go so slowly when you want something from them? Finally, he removes a sheet of paper from his briefcase. I graded your quiz team test last night, and since many of those who tried out for the competition team are in this class, I'm going to share the results with you now. The teachers of the cl other classes says who have students who tried out have been given the same list and are at the moment reading the results to them. So read the list, Connor shouts, getting up from his desk. If classroom behavior were a determining factor for making the team, Connor, you might be in trouble, Mr. Dimming said. Please quiet down for a moment. That shut him up and he sits down heavily. First of all, I'm very proud of all of you who took the test. It was quite challenging and you did extremely well. Rose raised her hand. Yes, Rose. Can we see the questions and answers later so we know where we messed up? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we'll use this test as a learning tool to study for the real competition. But anyone is free to see the test and check their responses. Please read the names, Connor says as politely as I've ever heard him. Mr. Dimming smiles. Okay, will do. I shall read the alternates first. Two fifth graders, two from sixth grade, Amanda Firestone, Molly, North, Elena, Rodriguez, Rodney, Musel. My heart falls to my shoes, which is not quite to the floor, but close. How could I have missed so many questions? Maybe my thumb slipped and I pushed the wrong letters. Catherine squeezes my hand. Molly and Rodney screech with joy. Amanda and Elena are sixth graders. Connor is noticeably quiet. And now, Mr. Dimmings continues, the names of the four students who scored the highest and will represent our school at the local competition. Downtown. The alternates will accompany them and will be called upon if... Any of the team members are unable to participate in any way. Are we ready? Ready, Connor says softly. I notice he has his fingers crossed behind his back. I'm proud to report that all four are from our classroom. He pauses. To know all of the finalists are from fifth grade blows me away. Way to go. 
We torched grade six? Awesome, Rodney says. Now read the names before Connor wets his pants. Connor reaches over and smacks Rodney on the back of the head. Mr. Dimming takes a deep breath. The top four scores and members of our quiz team will be Connor Bates. Connor interrupts him with a wild whooping cheer, of course. And if I may continue, Mr. D says over his glasses, we are also pleased to welcome Claire Wilson and Rose Spencer. Claire's smile is smug. But that's only three, Connor says, looking around in confusion. I can count, Connor, Mr. Dimming replies dryly. So who's the last person on the team, Molly asks. Earthquake report. TV weather guys feel some strange activity coming from local school. Could it be a girl's heartbeat pounding too hard? Mr. Deming clears his throat. I apologize. I think we have a misunderstand underestimated a member of our class. Earthquake report. This is a big one. He continues. In my 15 years of running this competition, I have never had a student make a perfect score on the practice test. It is designed to be challenging to weed out the weaker candidates. In a word, it's hard. Tell me about it, Connor mumbles. When Melody Brooks took that little practice quiz with, with us last week, I thought it was a lucky accident that she did so well. But yesterday, Melody blew us all away. She got every single question right. He pauses, making sure everyone is taking this in. And then he says, all of them. Earthquake report. Walls are tumbling everywhere. So she's on the team? Rose asks disbelief in her voice. Yes, she's on the team. But, but, we'll look weird, Claire counters. Everyone will stare at us. I'm not going to have any of that kind of talk. Do you understand, Mr. D said sternly? I am very proud of Melody. I regret I underestimated her, and I'm glad to have her on our team. Earthquake report. Call the paramedics. A girl in fifth grade is about to explode. Everyone in the class turns to look at me. Catherine gives me a hug. Rose flashes me a smile, and I try not to kick and drip and make my teammates sorry. That'll be on the team with them. Will the whiz kids folks be cool with Melody? Molly asks. Mr. Dimming looked thoughtful. I'll to contact the quiz team officials and let them know about our special circumstances, he says. But that's no concern of yours. Now listen up. Team members will meet every day after school for two hours for the next two weeks, right up until the first competition. Practice sessions are mandatory. Here's the paperwork for your parents to read and sign. I need it back tomorrow. Earthquake report. Expect big aftershocks. Nothing like this has ever been seen before. The more I think about it, the more excited I get. Television. Pressure. People looking at me. I can feel myself getting tense and tight. My arms and legs start doing the tornado spastic dance. My head jerks. I try not to, but I screech just a little bit. Everyone turns at the sound. I can see Mom, Molly and Claire jerking their hands, kicking their legs, and making crazy noises. A few people giggle. Mr. Dimming's face grows tight. I aim all my energy at my thumb and point to go. Catherine gets the message and hurries me out of there. I want to find a hole and hide in it. Aww. Hopefully, this will help people realize what she's got going in her head has nothing to do with her physical dis disability. Whew, I'm ready to read the next chapter. Give me a second.